welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming kind of a chatty video. This one was inspired by a video I saw that James Charles had uploaded on his YouTube channel and it featured him and Tati and they were doing like a challenge but then they started talking about the beauty community in that video and I thought their commentary was really really interesting especially for me as a smaller YouTuber. So I really enjoyed hearing James Charles talk about how YouTube is a business and how you need to think about it as a business, especially if that is your career. And I think what is so hard for people like me and smaller channels, and maybe just me in general, maybe I should just talk about myself. I shouldn't generalize anything. I shouldn't group you guys into it, but I want to give you guys my perspective. So thinking of YouTube as a business is definitely interesting because I think personally for me, I don't want to think of my YouTube channel as a business because that would be really scary as I'm sure my business would be in a huge deficit. If you don't know what a deficit is, it's basically a huge loss. And if you really think about it, I have been on YouTube, let's say I've been uploading for a year you know where I haven't really missed too many uploads and I have missed uploads like I was gone in April because I was home and then I was gone a lot you know last couple of months in the summer because my parents were here so I've had a few interruptions in my YouTube channel over the course of the length of time on YouTube I've made about $300 total on my YouTube channel and I'm sure you guys, if you watch my videos frequently, you'll know that I probably spend about $300 a week on makeup. If not, you know, less some weeks, more some weeks, just because depending on the releases that come out. If it's something that interests me, of course, I want to get it and review it for you guys. And of course, I just love makeup in general. So for me, I cannot see this as a business right now because it is a hobby. It's what I enjoy doing. If I didn't enjoy doing it, I wouldn't make YouTube videos. I get such a kick out of talking to you guys in the comments and it's just fun for me. This is like what I'm good at or at least I think I'm good at it and you know if I wasn't doing this maybe I'd be working out more, maybe I'd be cleaning my house more but I wouldn't be engaged in another entrepreneurial activity. This is my hobby. But I, I can see it from the larger influencers point of view too because like James said if you if this was your business, if this was your livelihood. You're gonna show up to work every day. You're gonna need to pay your employees. You're gonna need to pay your overhead costs. And yeah, a lot of it is just fixed costs like your camera, your lights, you know, you're probably gonna use those for a couple of years. Your studio, once you have a good setup, you're probably gonna use for a few years. Some of those things, you know, they can last you a while. Makeup, I would say, is probably gonna be something that's variable depending on what palette you're buying. Now, a lot of influencers do get scent makeup, which again, it's a perk of their job. Just like one of the perks of my job is that I get to go to lunch with you know my boss all the time and he'll buy me lunch. It's just you know the way I think it's just a perception thing. I always try to think about if I were to get all these like sponsorship offers and even now that I've hit like 2k it's not like I'm saying like oh I'm getting all these like offers but I've gotten like a few emails like I got one for a eyelash company like an eyelash growth serum and it's not that anything was wrong with the product or anything, but I'm like, once I start, if I go down this lane, I feel like it's just going to open up a whole can of worms and I don't have the capacity to deal with that right now. Like, this isn't my job. I can't sit there and deal with, like, negativity from people or new people coming on my channel and being upset with me about doing, like, this review of a product that was sent to me. So, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I just thought he brought up so many good points about YouTube being a business for these people. And from that perspective, I understand there's so many costs. I think people just think that YouTubers have this, like, unending pot of money. And they don't. And you guys also need to, I think, realize as consumers, like, the other day, I, was, I saw Laura Lee had uploaded after a while. And she had said you know, she was sorry, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody had said like jokingly, but also it was kind of funny. They were like, oh, her rent must be due. And people were like, the video isn't even monetized. And it's like, you guys, there's like a jillion other ways to make money. Even if your YouTube video isn't monetized, like it could be the interactions that she's getting from because people are watching the video. You know, that helps you get on the trending page. A lot of 
YouTubers I've seen now, they'll say like, if you don't like this video, thumbs it down. And I'm like, why do people say it thumbs down your video? Like you work so hard on it. You're almost like inviting people to thumbs down your video, but that's how you kind of trick the algorithm by saying thumbs down this video. You're still telling YouTube, Hey, I watched this video. I don't like it. I think that's what it is. I mean, I haven't done like extensive research, but that is my theory on that. You know, my husband said it might be just because like people are looking for feedback, but I just thought it was interesting that I saw people saying like thumbs down this video if you didn't enjoy it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would never want somebody to, you know, purposely encourage somebody to thumbs down my video. But I was like, well, I, like I want to test the theory, so that'll be interesting too. But I wrote down a whole bunch of notes, so let me see what else I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, I really liked that example he gave of like, traditional media versus influencer media and he talked about how say you were a business and say okay say I was dose of colors and I needed to advertise this highlighter well if I wanted to do it you know in traditional media say it wasn't a collab it was just a highlighter I would have to hire a model I would need to hire people to take pictures I would need to hire a studio I would need to hire assistants food da 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 and he was saying like a day like that at the studio can cost about $300. So then once your video is edited and done, now you need to actually pay for the ad space, whether it's print or radio or TV and stuff like that. And most people don't consume ads. I would probably say in the traditional sense, the way we used to. I don't think a lot of people watching, you know, Super Bowl or whatever other big like this is us, you know, you're not going to be watching this is us in the middle of that. Like you're going to see a dose of colors like buy this highlighter you know so i think influencer marketing makes sense because they're the most direct contact that brands can have with their audience so i thought that was really interesting that point he bought about i so he, he you know he kind of said like okay in a way marlena kind of screwed us over because she put this big number out there but really think of you know the profit margin for a company that's making a million billion dollar product paying sixty thousand dollars to an influencer when they are then going to gain this whole profit margin is not really that bad of a deal for for a brand so I get it, you know, if it's if it was me paying, you know, X, Y, and Z person on my team, if I relied on YouTube as my job, like, I can't tell you guys what I would do. Sorry, you guys, my camera died. But basically, I was in the middle of just saying, like, we don't know what we would do if we were in those positions where our whole, you know, livelihood, our friends, our families all relied on our paycheck to, you know, take care of them and things like that. So I'm not saying that excuses people's behavior. I just feel like there's no book or like a how-to manual on how to be an influencer. And so there's a lot of like people that are kind of, you know, working things out and helping out the next you know, batch of influencers on what not to do, what to do, etc, etc. So another one of the notes I had written down is you can really tell who runs their YouTube channel like a business. I feel like I've definitely noticed a lot of even smaller channels where, you know, they don't address controversial topics or they don't address like controversies or they'll talk about brands that don't necessarily always do the right thing. And that's the other thing too because I feel like I do that too and we could sit here all day long and like hash out who we think people should support and who we don't think people should support and I think the conclusion I've come to is just like you're not going to change anyone's minds and I think anytime you watch one of these commentary or controversial videos you just need to keep in mind that that's that person's opinion that doesn't need to be your opinion just because their opinion is different from you doesn't mean they're a bad person doesn't mean you're a bad person and we all just need to harmoniously get along and you know keep on keeping on especially the smaller influencer community I feel like there's so many cool channels out there and I think that it's all fine and great that all the bigger channels are like scrambling right now because they're just like reeling from this big reveal of how much like an influencer get gets paid so yeah I don't know that was just interesting to me um just seeing like when you think about it it's like a business it's paying somebody's rent it hopefully puts things in perspective for you guys as to why influencer hustling to you know review products and get views and you know do giveaways just to like get all these views and more views and things like that because it is where their next paycheck is coming from
Um, and then I just had some questions. I'm so curious to know what you guys think. Um, do you guys think it's, you know, wrong to consider YouTube a job? Like, do you feel like it should just be strictly people's hobby? Is that kind of where YouTube went wrong with people starting to like make crazy, you know, six, seven figure dollars a year? Has it really tainted the community and it's no longer just about like, hey, let's all have fun and talk about makeup. I know I feel like with my channel, I feel like a lot of videos you watch, it's like, do this, do that, don't do this, do that. And I just wanted to ask you guys, like, what do you think? I think that it's just a very, very fine line where you can have all these people that trust you and the next second you could do something and you could be like off the you know, off the planet, you could be canceled. <laughs> that should strike fear in every YouTuber's heart, being canceled. So I think that for me, it would take a lot for me to quit my job and do this full time. I think it would be so terrifying because I think of like all my bills, like my rent, my car payment, my health insurance, you know, your retirement planning, like these people have to do all of that on their own. So the that number to actually live off of YouTube, oh my gosh, it's scary to think about. Like just to be comfortable and knowing then that your job can end at any time because of something you did a long time ago, ooh, that's a lot of pressure. I feel like that's why I can't do like commission jobs. Like I could never be a commission only job. Like real estate, insurance agents, like salespeople, whew. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> it would definitely need a base salary. So. Anyway, just some thoughts. I wanted to spew out into the universe, see what you guys thought of it. Pick it up, gnaw on it, nibble on it, chew on it, and leave me your comments down below. Let's have a discussion. I'm so excited for this video. I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was really interesting. I'm gonna link that video I'm talking about, um, the James Charles video, down below. I thought it was really interesting and yeah, that's what sparked this conversation. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you for bearing with me while I ramble to try to get my thoughts together and I will catch you in my next one. Bye guys.